So the practical use of an array is that sometimes uh, it depends on the user how many values the user wants to enter. So you can ask the user how many uh, values you'd like to enter and then have a loop where you're asking the user to provide the values. So then uh, to retain um, values entered in the loop you need an array. Another example, if you're reading something um, some sort of information from a file um, and you open the file you can scan you can find out you can measure the size of the file uh, by the size of the record and you may decide that you you need uh, 16 uh, elements or 16 values to store uh, to store to accommodate uh, values uh, loaded from a file in this case again you will create an array you probably will have a loop which will just read, uh, read information from a file sequentially and populate the array elements uh, with the values. So it's extremely convenient to organize an array and then be able to process uh, values uh, in a loop. We already mentioned that array of objects are also possible. Uh, so this, uh, in our case, we're using array of strings to demonstrate array of objects. But of course, as we mentioned before, you can have custom classes uh, of your own. Uh, you can design them and then you can create objects of, of that uh, specific uh, class and then store object references inside an array. We already mentioned all of these uh, uh, variations uh, to um, to populate uh, uh, initially populate array with the set of values. So this is um, uh, initialization list, and we've uh, demonstrated a couple of initialization lists uh, in our examples already. Now you begin to realize that once created, uh, this uh, array. For example, array of strings, right? So name list becomes an array object like this, and then it gets populated with references uh, to these strings, right? So this is what happens um, in this uh, example. So after creation, either by new or created as as initialization list like we have right here the size of an array becomes a fixed size it is not flexible it cannot be resized it cannot become smaller it cannot become larger if you realize that suddenly you need a larger array because you want to add new names you would have to allocate larger array for more elements you would have to copy all of this over right you have to copy these references over to here right to uh, each uh, each of these references you have to make a copy and then you can populate more uh, you can store and manipulate uh, more elements inside this array because now you have more space uh, right here but uh, you cannot change the original array size so because that's the case uh, creation of new array adds a field this is not a method it's a field named length so each array has uh, basically uh, an additional uh, a static element right here uh, that is called length and so the length specifies how many elements are here so in our case this will be five because we just created an array of five strings so this is uh, an array of 10 integers so we can uh, use this length which will be 10 so this value will be remembered inside uh, the length so to demonstrate let's change remember how we created um, an array of integers and then we called method name demo which took reference to an array of integers and we've hard-coded uh, this uh, version of uh, uh, assigning specific values to each uh, element. So alternatively, what we can do uh, right here, we can create a loop, uh, a for loop, because we definitely need some kind of count. So we can say integer count. 
or even better let's call it an index because this will be something I'd like to use as an index start with zero of course because we know that array um, initial array index is zero so that's why we start with that index less than i array length so this gives us pretty consistent way of staying inside the boundaries of our array so plus plus index to increment it and now if i wanted more generic version of this method which is not hard coded to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If I wanted to do the same thing inside this loop, I'll take, take this uh, array and use my index, which of course will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 in case of our um, array of uh, values, wherever we created right here, integer of uh, uh, five, five size uh, element. Uh, array of integers so here we say uh, our array index equals uh, and here if we want to be consistent with one two three four five we would have to take index plus one right because we start with uh, zero so this becomes one then two then three and so forth so this um, this would be a replacement uh, for ugly hard-coded version of this uh, demo uh, method which populates arrays with predictable a sequence of integers but using more generic version that relies on uh, the array length field okay so each array whenever we create an array has the length field and so this also becomes extremely convenient when we pass array to another method which could accept all kinds of arrays of different uh, lengths and uh, so this uh, uh, loop will be uh, pretty pretty easy to implement because we always know the length of the array.